We know that various applications are used in business enterprises to store business data. Very often, there is a need to transfer data from one application to another. If such a data transfer is required from a third-party application to tally ERP-9 using XML method, the application data has to be converted into a specific XML format which can be understood by tally. Its significance can be understood by considering the example of Mr. Kumar who wants to transfer some masters and transactions data from his application into Tally. He contacts an integrator but in spite of having the relevant technical knowledge, the integrator is unable to carry out the data transfer as he is not aware of the Tally specific XML format. In this video, the Tally XML format will be explained so that you can seamlessly carry out data transfer into Tally from a third-party application. Typically, the XML format looks like this. The header tag contains the major instructions for Tally. Within the body tag, there is a request disk tag containing the details of the request and the request data tag containing the actual data to be transmitted. Tally also supports the following alternate format in which only a few tags are different. To understand the XML format, we can view the actual XML by exporting the relevant data from Tally in XML format. If no data is present in Tally ERP9, we can take the following approach. Let's start by creating a company in Tally. Now we will create a ledger Let's export the ledger Data of each master can be seen enclosed within a pair of tally message tags. But apart from the ledger master to be exported, tally also exports the masters on which ledger has some dependency, like currency, group, etc. Let's edit the XML file to eliminate such masters and retain the data of only the particular ledger. Within the ledger too, we can see a lot of empty tags and redundant tags. Let's remove them and save the changes. The XML will now appear as follows. Similarly, if we create one more ledger, export it and edit the XML file in the same way as before, the XML will appear as follows. It is actually only this XML which needs to be sent to Tally to create the two ledgers. This can be verified by importing this XML into another company in Tally. Now, the imported ledgers can be seen in the list of accounts report which indicates that they have been successfully imported. The verification can also be done by importing a new ledger in this particular format in the same company. Now, let's perform a similar exercise to understand the format for inventory masters. We will create a stock item. Now, let's go to list of accounts and click on the button stock item. In the final XML, we can see that the data of the stock item as well as that of the unit of measurement and the stock group is present.
To understand the Tally XML format for transactions, let's pass a payment voucher. Just as in the case of ledgers and stock items, details of the voucher will be present within the tally message tags. As all the voucher tags, irrespective of the voucher type and the available data have been exported, remove the unnecessary tags. The XML of the payment voucher now looks like this. The voucher tag denotes that a voucher is being created or altered. Within the voucher tag, the attribute remote ID serves as the unique identifier in the event of alteration of an already created voucher. It can be any running number generated from the third-party application uniquely for each voucher. The tag persisted view is used to specify the mode of display of the transaction for the tally user, which can be accounting voucher view, invoice voucher view, etc. Details of each ledger involved in the transaction are present within the all ledger entries dot list tags. It includes the ledger name, the amount debited or credited, etc. If the amount is a debit, then the tag is deemed positive is set to yes, else it is set to no. In case there are more ledger entries in the payment voucher, information corresponding to each entry will be present within multiple all ledger entries dot list tags. Now let's pass a voucher with some inventory details like sales voucher. Once the voucher is created, we will export the vouchers once again from Daybook The details of the various stock items sold will be present within all inventory entries dot list tags. Since the imported sales transaction is in the invoice mode of display, the corresponding accounting ledger has to be specified within accounting allocations dot list tags. The details of the ledgers involved in the sales transaction will be within ledger entries dot list tags. We hope that this video has been helpful in understanding the Tally XML format so that you can get started with performing data integration with Tally ERP9 from any third party application. You can also use the approach shared in this video to explore and self-learn the XML format of various other masters and transactions in Tally ERP9.